Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sunny Grill at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Please welcome Miss K.T. Sullivan. Beatles, 
the Ann Sullivan Show. And it changed my life. <laughs> but I was affected by those ladies on the silver screen. And you've already heard from Army Dunn. And, and I, actually, I always wanted to be Alice Faye. <laughs> she always got the good songs. And sometimes Tyrone Power, too. <laughs> No, 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 nothing until my baby comes home. No, sir, no, nothing as long as baby must roam. I promised him I'd wait for him till even the Hades froze. I'm lonesome, heaven knows. But what I say still goes No love, no nothing And that's the promise I'll keep No fun with no one I'm getting plenty of sleep
I'll say was always waiting around for some man to come home. <laughs> so every film I've ever seen her, she's waiting for some. I think she uh, represents the myth of the constant woman. <laughs> you know, like the myth of Penelope weaving and waiting for Odysseus to come back from those Trojan wars. See, constant women are at a premium during wartime. <laughs> so much so, it's probably the most independent woman in Hollywood, Betty Davis. Sometimes referred to as the fifth Warner Brother. <laughs> Even Betty Davis found herself in a film called Thank Your Lucky Stars, 1943. She found herself in this predicament. You marched away and left this town as empty as can be. And I'm like the driftwood in a deadly calm at sea. I can't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. <laughs> For there is no secret lover that the draft board didn't discover. <laughs> They're either too young or too old. They're either too brave or too grassy green. The pickings are poor and the crop is lean. What's good is in the army. What's left will never they're either too old or too young. So darling, you'll never get stung. Tomorrow I go hiking with that Eagle Scout, unless I get a call from Grandpa for a snappy game of chess. They're either too warm or too cold. They're either too fast or too fast asleep. So darling, believe me, I'm yours to keep. There isn't any gravy. The Grims in the Navy. <laughs> They're either too fresh or too stale. There is no available mail. I will confess to one romance I'm sure you will allow. It tries to serenade me, but his voice is changing now. <laughs> They're either too bold or too bold. I'm down with a wheelchair and bassinet. My heart just refuses to get upset. I simply can't compel it to, with no marine to tell it to. I'm either the first breath of spring, or else I'm the last little fling. I either get a fossil or an adolescent pump. I either have to hold them off, or I have to hold them up. <laughs> the battle is on, but the fortress will hoot. I'll never ever fail you when you were in Australia, or out of the Aleutians, or off among the Russians, <laughs> or flying over Egypt, your heart will never be Egypt. <laughs> or when you get to India, I'll still be what I've been to you. <laughs> I will look the field over and low and be
Well, Vera Ellen came to Hollywood. They decided she should have a different voice. Singing sing voice, that is. So she was dubbed by uh, Anita Ellis, Dorothy Ellers, Pat Friday, Tara Richards, and Gloria Woods. It's amazing to me that no one in the audience noticed that she, every time she sang she had a different voice. And all these things. It's one of those phenomena of the, of the silver screen, I think, a suspension of disbelief, that illusion that is made possible because of all these great voices that sang for these things. But the, the, the American public wanted to think that all of these great ladies of silver screen sang. They wanted to think that everyone could sing. And these voices made it possible. I'm so excited that in my audience tonight are some great voices of the silver screen. Uh, Kay Starr is here. Uh, next month, this month, guys. No, next month. Uh, this is coming to an end, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but we also have Monica Lewis here. I just found out that someone I know from New York, from Jane Harvey, can't believe it. One of the great Silver Street voices. There was, when they did the, uh, the musical show about the, the second time around, the first time around, uh, with Helen Morgan, played Julie, the coveted role of Julie. When they redid it, um, Lena Horne wanted that role so badly. But it went to Ava Gardner, and they did a great, great voice. And that voice was, is here tonight. Isn't she? Annette? Is Annette here? Annette Warren is right here, yes! She, uh, uh, Gogi Grant, who played the voice. Yes, I worked with Gogi. I know she was supposed to make. I guess she didn't. But she'll be here this week. She, uh, she and I worked together in New Haven on uh, a Sammy Payne show, and she was the voice uh, of Helen Morgan in the story of Helen Morgan. And so she sang this song. Ned sang this song. So this is my tribute to all the great voices. Thank you. Yes. Julie always had one of these. <laughs> I used to dream that I would discover the perfect lover someday. I knew I'd recognize him if ever he came round my way. I always used to fancy then he'd be one of the godlike kind of men.
never in your arms. <laughs> when it is you I'm kissing, I pray to you constantly. You don't know what you're missing, for you're only kissing for me. to be none other than the queen of dead and comedy, Virginia O'Brien. ladies, leading ladies of the silver screen, most of them have to include girls. And in this scene, she's at Ricardo Montalban's apartment. And one thing leads to another. It's getting rather intimate. Uh, so, oh, actually, Ricardo Montalban in this movie is very funny. He plays a South American polo player <laughs> named Jose O'Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point in the evening, she protests. I really can't stay. But baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> but baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been so very nice. I'll hold your hand. <laughs> I love her, will start to worry. You know what you're 
My father will be pacing the floor. So really I've got to scurry. Or maybe just a half a drink more. The neighbors might think. Say what's in this drink. I wish I knew how to break the spell. I'll take your hand. I ought to say no, 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 sir. At least I could have said that I tried. What's the sense of hurting my pride and leaving me all alone with my rich Corinthian? Mark Howard Adams, Reporter Monster. song is sung by a totally different type. Very unusual during this time period to have a woman who, okay, who knows what she wants, uh, but at least lets someone know what she wants. Uh, and Betty Garrett played this role, and we're Betty Garrett and, and on the town, a little cab driver, the independent thing, aggressive. Well, this can scare some men to death. So in this case, the man is Red Skelton. I simply can't. But stay. baby, it's cold outside. I got to go. But baby, it's cold outside. This evening, the home that you so drop in. Nice I'll hold your hand, there's just like My a. My sister will be suspicious. Got your lips look delicious. My will be better than the Won't roll upon the floor. My maiden aunt's like Gosh, suspicious. Well, delicious. maybe just a cigarette. Put more. some records on our floor. No, I got to go. Baby, you freeze out there. Lend me your it's up to your knees out there. Well, you've really been crying. How can you do this thing to me? Think of my life of sorrow. If you brought pneumonia and died, I really can't stay. And she is still like that. Tell them the name of her character in the movie. Oh, this is great. See, Betty Garrett at the time was a big star on Broadway in uh, Call Me Mistress, and they wanted to take advantage of that, her notoriety. So her character's name in the fi film is Betty Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I'm just a little girl from Little Rock. We lived on the wrong side of the track. The gentleman asked me out one night, and after he told me wrong from right, we moved to the right side of the track. Then someone broke my heart in Little Rock, and I up and left old Arkansas. Like a little old slam, I roamed about till I came to New York, and I found out the one you call your daddy ain't your pa. And I was one and done, earning every night, opportunity would knock. And some of these days in my fancy clothes, I'm going back home and thumb my nose at the one who done me wrong. The one who done me wrong. The one who done me wrong. I'll be in my room alone. Every post meridian. Yes, I'll be with my diary and that book. Bye, Mr. Gideon. <laughs> bye, bye, baby. Remember you're my baby when they give you the eye. Although I know that you can, won't you run? Thank you. 
Thomas and by Marilyn Monroe, and a film called Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. But I'd like to quote someone, I think is here tonight. Maybe Mamie Van Doren said that um, sometimes uh, blondes prefer gentlemen. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? But, um, of course, you all know that Carol Channing's playing the role on Broadway. But I might need to remind you that in the, the uh, most recent revival on Broadway, Laura Lani was played by me. Oh. Yeah. I love recreating roles created by legends. <laughs> Why else would I be doing a show called The Ladies of the Silver Screen? <laughs> and trying to do tributes to Vivid and Bryan. <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, but um, one thing I can, have, I can be thankful for is the fact that the, the role of Laura Lady was not created by Judy Garland. <laughs> Yes, I never do a song made famous by Judy Garland in my show because, well, the comparisons are endless. <laughs> but you can't leave her out of shows all the ladies on the silver screen. So I'd like to do two, two obscure songs. Uh, I don't know why they're obscure, they're great songs. The first one is from an animated feature called Gay Purry, about a pussycat in Paris. <laughs> As lyrics by Neil you know, Harper, it's also music by Harold Arlen. And the second one, has lyrics uh, by Ira Gershwin with uh, Carol Garland. And it's from the movie A Star is Born. For some reason, it didn't become famous. I don't know why. She sings this to James Mason on their honeymoon. It's a new 
Superstar had a daughter who became a superstar. Her daughter was, uh, her uh, godfather was Ira Gershwin. Her father was the director of great Hollywood musicals. And um, there's a film that, God forbid, was made in the 70s. <laughs> but she sang a great Gershwin tune written in the 20s. And it's been said about Liza Minnelli that not only does she sing a song, but she exposes it. <laughs> so Mark and I would like to expose the men I love. When the mellow moon begins to beam every night, I dream a little dream, and of course, Prince Charming is the theme, the theme for me. Although I realize as well as you, That a dream comes true to me, it's clear that he'll appear. He'll come along, and when I love, and he'll be big and strong, and when I love, and when he comes my way.
sheltering palms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it had a big effect on me. <clears throat> you see, uh, it started at Haven as this full-time nurse, part-time seductress. <laughs> and uh, Jane Greer played the good woman. She usually got the bad girl parts, but this time she was a good girl. And Mitzi Gaynor played the native girl. <laughs> Don't you love that bit of casting? <laughs> I'd love to do that casting session. <laughs> and they said, hmm, naked girl. So they just said, Mitzi Hainer! <laughs> 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 um, but in this scene, <laughs> let's say Jane Fair is lurking among these palms over here. <laughs> and, uh, Mitzi Gaynor oh. these palms over here in a girl costume, very dark makeup. <laughs> and, uh, is dressed in this sarong, very form-fitting. Not unlike this, actually, but oh. spits a little over to the side, <laughs> off the shoulder. And, uh, Jane Greer is very interested to see how this scene will develop, because she's in love with William Lundigan. Oh. <laughs> and cute, wasn't he? Stand beside his cheek. And uh, Gloria Haven slings down the steps of her bungalow. <laughs> she offers William Lundigan a drink. She also offers him all of me. Why not take all me? I'm no good without you. Take my lips. I want to use them. Take my arms. I'll never use them. <laughs> So why not? So why not? So why not? 
Molly that says, Good night, Angela. Gotta get back to base. He gets in his Jeep and drives off. Gloria very dejectedly walks back up the steps of her bungalow. And it's Gaynor, the native girl. She throws a coconut at Gloria's behind. And Gloria does this great take. And Jane Greer giggles. When I was watching this film with my parents in Oklahoma, my father always thought that was very unrealistic when, uh, when Lee Wonder just got in his Jeep and drove off. He's going to be a crush on Gloria to Haven. I was in love with her. So, uh, so, always in my imagination, my mother was Jane Greer looking with the palms over there. Uh, she even looks a bit like her. And if uh, my father had been playing the William London part, Glory to Haven could have been my mother. <laughs> oh, well. Actually, Glory to Haven is the only woman in Hollywood history to play her own mother on the silver screen. Her mother was Mrs. Carter to Haven, and she was a star of Broadway, Broadway and Vaudeville. And in the film called Three Little Words, the story of Ruby and Calmer, the songwriters, she gets to sing the song that her mother introduced while Fred Astaire listens. And Red Skelton seems to be playing the piano. <laughs> those illusions of the silver screen. It's interesting how Red Skelton's come up with the show like three times now. <laughs> supporting cast. Um, <clears throat> you smiled when we parted. It hurt me somehow. I thought there was nothing worthwhile. The tables are turning, and you all. of disbelief, those illusions of the silver screen. But in this case, Ethel Merman is wearing a sailor hat with sideburns attached. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty great, you gotta see it. And uh, <laughs> so I thought uh, Mark Nather, uh, so Mark Nather as the Merm. I'm an old salt. I'm a young salt. In the Navy we've been, been working very hard. I was part of a flotilla with Dewey in Manila. Navy 
yard. Tonight we're all as free and feeling flowery. When got a day with gals and drink and food. From Brooklyn across to the Bowery. And I'm gonna get the kid tattooed. Love and reply. 
one here even think he hurts me. But you have to look around to find a reason for such a wonderful thing. You can blame it on the sentimental season. Falling in love is done in the spring. The bubblelink looked at us with a wink. Not a boy, not a girl, nothing wrong. Oh, when you're in love, you go swinging along. A singing in the dick, you can so sing it to me. Oh, I love when he does that. I love that. I'm a pushover from Abba Downtown. Oh, a little bit of triple A trill. I'm hearing the dick you heard to the And a cuckoo, sing a cuckoo to a blue jay. Who told a lark in the park? Who responded, how'd you do? How'd you do the jay? How'd you like to go for a lark? Oh. A couple links, and I think that I think. Winter's over, winter's over, winter's over! Keep on it, said I'll give you my word. It ain't gonna snow anymore, sweetheart. It ain't gonna snow anymore. I love a good nest egg. It ain't gonna snow anymore. If the bed breaks down, I'll meet you in the spring. <laughs> Introduced the Dickie Bird song, and now she's married to Dickie Moore. So the song was prophetic. And... <laughs> but this next song was sung by um, both Lena Horne and Ethel Waters in a film called Cabin in the Sky. That was, and a great lyrics by John Latouche. And I think that both Lena Horne and Ethel Waters, Waters were quite aware that these lyrics were anything but innocent. What I got at the other's end that always seems to please is ain't my perfume or my fancy paint, but when I charm the middle soul.
wondering what Lady the Silver Screen singer actually was sung by Mabel Mercer. Written for her, oh well, great, yes, you know, all the singers know Mabel Mercer. Uh, it was written for her by Barn Howard. For, that song was written for her 50th birthday. And uh, the reason it has a connection to Ladies of the Silver Screen is that Frank Sinatra uh, gave Mabel Mercer credit for his phrasing. That's where he said he learned his phrasing. Well. Hearing her so many nights, and on his arm, most of those nights, was Ava Gardner. So late in her life, when she was giving interviews and they asked her uh, what her philosophy of life was, she started quoting that song. <laughs> And my friend Barton Howard had been listening on one of those morning poems and started hearing his song. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so, but that's the connection that has. But I want to leave you with uh, something from my first album. And it is actually the exception of my show because it was written in the 70s from a, a movie musical. But I think the reason I like it so much is because it's by an Italian, um, Henry Mancini. Let me go wrong. Uh, <laughs> and um, this is, I think, the. Well, it's a, it's a movie about um, a woman who's pretending to be a man who's pretending to be a woman. It's about the greatest illusion of them all. The greatest Hollywood illusion of all, which was created by men, the illusion of female beauty. And I want to dedicate this to my two sisters, because we had to share a mirror when we were growing up. <laughs> With five brothers. <laughs> It's difficult, female beauty. Crazy world, full of crazy First you drive me wild, and then you win my heart with your wicked art. One minute gentle, tender. Then temperamental like a summer storm Just when I can feel your heart getting warmer You're cold and you're cool And I, like a fool, try to cool Try to hang on to Every day the same old roller coaster ride. But I've got my pride, I won't give in. Even though I know I'll never win.
Michelle Gonet, here we are at the Roosevelt. Isn't this exciting? Too sweet here Back at the... Back again. Cinder Grill. Deja vu. <laughs> yeah, KT Sullivan tonight. She brought the silver screens here tonight. She's so wonderful. Lady of Isn't silver Isn't she wonderful? Screen. Well, she had a lot of wonderful Lady of Silver screen in there. And a wonderful... Kind of frightening, wasn't it? Oh, but just, just such a wonderful well, actress as well. What's happening with you right now in your life? I, I've been touring the country. Uh -huh. oh, okay. so <laughs> I've been doing the community uh -huh. concerts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know the community concerts? I'm having so much fun. And I got to, got to Paris last year, Paris, uh -huh. Indiana, oh. Berlin, New Hampshire, uh -huh. and Peru, Indiana, <laughs> Cole Porter's hometown. You look wonderful. I do? Yes, you look wonderful. If I'd known I was going to run into you, I would have shaved, I would have taken my hat off. Still pounding so that you, piano. You look the same. I feel You haven't oh, changed. I, I haven't so. seen I you in so. 10 years, maybe. Ten, has it been 10? That's, I think that's the last okay. time I was at the Roosevelt. Del Gane, it's so wonderful seeing you on <laughs> your show. It was thank a wonderful you. evening tonight. Thank you. It was really wonderful. Nice seeing you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I am with K-Star, one of the greatest. Here you are with everybody. At the K-Star, one of the greatest singers ever. One, Not only a singer, but a great performer. Oh, my goodness. K-Star, tell me of wheels of fortune, my God. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Spinning, it's still spinning. Do you know what was so thrilling about tonight? Right. We're here at the Roosevelt we're talking about tonight. Katie, Katie Sullivan. She is doing the Ladies of the Silver Screen. and She, she is so darling, but I'll tell you the most exciting thing is she's from Oklahoma, and so oh, am I. Right. <laughs> from Oklahoma. You betcha. Southern ladies, my God. Tell me about, uh, here, you're opening with the great Mills Brothers. You bet. It's father and son of the Mills Brothers. Right. I promise you, you close your eyes, you cannot tell the difference really? between the four than the two. Uh-huh. I look, love them. You look wonderful. What are you, I feel what's good. exciting right now in K. Steve, I mean, K. Uh, Star's <laughs> life, K. Stevens, yeah, uh, well, K. Star. What's, I don't know about her life, but yeah. mine's progressing very well. I just had a birthday. Happy birthday. And and people say to me, and it's so much fun when you watch people in the audience, they start counting when they see you come on the stage and say, oh gee, uh, I was in college when she did so and so. And they're trying to figure out how old we are. Uh -huh. We used to do that. We used to watch this when I was with the four girls four. Right. Clooney, uh, Helen O'Connell. That's right. right. Helen O'Connell. Right. And uh, uh, Margaret Whiting Margaret was one Whiting, of them too. Great. That's right. That's right. And we all used to stand in the wings and watch those people uh -huh. counting their fingers, trying to figure out how old we were. And I have never told anybody how old I am, but I tell them I'm closer to the end than I am to the middle. K Star, looking back in your life, what? tell me, what's the most exciting moment that has been in your life? Exciting. Oh looking my back. God, don't you've had ask some... that. You've got to understand as you get older. Right. You have things that are the most exciting thing. You think nothing ever is going to happen right. to you bigger than that. And then you get to be older and something else happens. These are steps that you have in your life. And I can't really tell you. I think the fact that I can get on the stage uh -huh. and have those people like me enough right. to maybe stand once in a while <laughs> and certainly not boo me. That's the most wonderful time. And that is maybe sometimes twice a night. What's your philosophy in life, K-Star? You, uh, you're just a great lady from Oklahoma. <laughs> Such free I don't know. spirit, come on. Well, I really feel like do anything you think you're big enough to do okay. and the simple things twice. You're gonna come to the Roosevelt here at the Senegal in August the... I think we start the 19th. 19th. Five days out of the week uh, it's gonna be and great. two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, boy. We're going to come to see you. We can send out our laundry. Thank you, K-Star. You're great. <laughs> love you, darling. I love Keep you. Keep sending that will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can we get Virginia? Yes. Terry, of course. Come here. Terry, honey. Come here. Yes, sweetheart. How are you, darling? Oh, wonderful. Oh, uh, here we are, look at me. Well, here I am with my favorite MGM great musicos, lovely lady of the musicos, Virginia O'Brien. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you, Skip. And you're next to your great, lovely little daughter. Yes. Terry? Terry. Hi, Hello, Terry. how are you? Hey, you. I understand you played the bass, is that right? That I do. You have a group? Uh, not at the moment. No? But tell me, Virginia O'Brien, tonight here we're at the uh, Roosevelt, the ladies of the silver screen she was doing. I mean, uh, how did you feel about that? I mean, oh, I thought she, uh, she was just, she could have gone on forever, uh -huh. Skippy. She was just marvelous, really. She did you great. Well, I, 
What do you thought of her doing That was hysterical. Mommy? Wasn't it? That was hysterical. That was so cute. How I'm do you feel girl. about your mother on the screen when you were a little girl growing up? What did you thought? I guess I thought that was normal, that everyone's mother did that. Did that? Is that Absolutely. Yeah. Stiff neck like that? Absolutely. <laughs> Virginia O'Brien, you had a tragic in your life just recent, and I just loved your husband. Mm -hmm. He was wonderful, Harry. Yeah. You uh -huh. just lost Harry, your dear love. It must be very hard on you. That must be the, the tragic of your life, right? Yeah. Oh. You know, Virginia O'Brien, you've had a great life. It's uh, yeah. always been a great life. Your mother's had a wonderful life. Am I right, honey? Absolutely, Skip. You know that, because I've been on your show. You know how many years you've had your TV shows looking, looking and your... Back, you know, I see you on the film all the time, mm -hmm. constantly with Judy Garland, that great lady. Oh, I loved her. She just, you learn so much from Judy, I'll tell you. Just, she was, we talk about a professional, she was a real pro. And like Liza, Liza Terry, Terry knows. She's opening at the well, pantry. Terry knows. You know Liza, don't you? Yes. You grew up as children, evidently. Well, yes, we did. We're all the same age. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, we are. You were around MGM lot when, when Liza and when Judy was there. How did you do? Do you remember Judy Garland looking back as a child? I do. I actually do. She was taller than I was then. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she didn't frighten you? <laughs> no, uh -huh. not at all. But Virginia. Terry, you know, I was carrying in the Harvey Girls. Oh, in the Harvey Girls? You yeah. Really? Yes. Oh. That's, if you ever That's see that movie again, you'll see, see me my, with pillows and whatever <laughs> George Sidney had. Wonderful, great movie. George oh. Sidney. I interviewed George Sidney. He directed it. He oh, yeah. He's a wonderful director. Absolutely. Yes. You I see love him a lot, don't you? Around oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Oh, yes, uh huh. Give me three words, three words to describe Virginia O'Brien. Just three words, quick words. I'm, you're such a great lady. I'm a deadpan singer. I have four children, three daughters and a son. I have seven grandchildren. I have a great grandson, three years old. I have a great granddaughter, one year old. <gasps> And I don't know how many more I'm expecting. No, not me. <laughs> Louis B. Mayer, was he tough to work for? Oh, like everybody oh, no. says he was. Oh, not at he all. He wasn't, was he? No. He was a fine gentleman, and my family loved him, and he knew my did you, family. Did you, did you meet him many times, Louis B. Mayer? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. <laughs> at the commissary, I bet you remember, going to the commissary at MGM. No, Maybe I did. I did. I did. Yeah, well, she's, you know, they don't, kids don't remember don't that. Where you are. <laughs> Virginia O'Brien, always great seeing you. You are the dearest lady of this Hollywood film oh. industry. I love you, darling. Love you, Skippy. God bless you. You God. too. Terry, wish you a lot of luck. I hope that thank you. gets around. I hope you start well. playing somewhere around town. Well, thank you. I hear you play that bass. You had a, yeah. Who's your drummer? You, you play drums too? You uh -huh. drums. You do. Drums, bass, everything, right? Great, Terry. Nice yes. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Don't you think Monica should be in the middle? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Right. Here I am. Here I am. Oh boy, here I am at the Roosevelt, and guess what? Here is Jane Harvey. How are you, Jane? I'm just fine. Oh, who's next to you is Monica Lewis. My Hello, love. love. How are you? Boy, you look beautiful. And Annette Warren. <laughs> well, Annette Warren, I just watched Showboat the other night. Oh boy, this is the lady that Ava Gardner, one of my favorite ladies. Your voice. Right. The voice of Ava Gardner and Showboat. And a great voice of and her own, voice. of right. her own. And her own voice. In her Jane, own. what's happening with you right now? Well, what's happening with me right now, I'm living here for a while. In California? In, in Los Angeles. You're and from, from New York, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to go back no. to New York. Oh, yes, let me go. Since 1950s, does that make me a New Yorker here? I've been a long time here. Go ahead. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm in the antique business oh, trying okay. to do something legitimate. You enjoy the antique? Too. I love it. I love it. Good. I love singing, though, best you're, of all. You're, you're still singing, aren't you? Well, not for about two years. Oh, really? But maybe, maybe After again. tonight, which you saw 
Oh, this wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw Katie. She was Sullivan marvelous. Sullivan during the Lady of the Silver Screen. She was marvelous. Get in here. Come yes, on, talk, Monica. Talk, talk. It was the Lady of the Silver Screen. She Thank was you. doing Katie Sullivan tonight. And Wasn't she what marvelous? Was this all of? Are we okay here? No. No. I know. Are we okay? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, tonight we're here at the Roosevelt. We just saw Katie Sullivan. Wasn't she, she great? Was Yes. Silver screen wasn't ladies? she fantastic? Spectacular. She was, wasn't she? she? Was. And she did Absolutely. such a beautiful show, and she's got a gorgeous voice. Monica Lewis, what yes. has been exciting right now in your life? In my life, yes. I have a new album coming out, a CD, and um, what are we doing here? Uh, should I take that? No, you got it. it. Okay. Um, I have a CD coming out in September. A new one. A new one. New. Okay. And it's called Why Did I Choose You? That's a good title. And it's a tribute to my late husband, Jennings Lang, uh, and they're all loves songs about people who were in love and I was. Wonderful. People in love. This lady does a lot of great in love too. Tell me about that wonderful well, thing you did at MGM uh, Showboat with Robert. Okay, well you know what we're doing? Yes. I'm in a show called Hollywood Secret Singing Stars and we're going to be at the Alex Theater in Glendale on September 27th. Uh, India Adams, who sang for Joan Crawford, and uh, and uh, uh, Betty Wan sang for Rita Moreno, and I sang for Ava Gardner and Lucille Ball, and it's yeah. Tell me about that great lady of comedy. She was yes, she was just a regular. She was a wonderful lady. Ava but Gardner, the, come on, let's go back. Ava Gardner. Yeah. yeah. Jameer, elegant, beautiful. She was gorgeous. I don't she, know why they say Marilyn Monroe. Mar Marilyn Monroe, forget Marilyn. Am I right? She was a woman. Everyone claims Marilyn Monroe. Ava she was Gardner. exquisite. Yeah. Ladies, the most am I right? Luscious. Yeah. She was absolutely exquisite. Most exquisite. Yeah. Exquisitely yeah. beautiful. Good friend. Yes. Monica Lewis, you look so good. What's this what's your friend? secret, darling? What's my secret? I'm 75 years old. I feel oh. perfectly marvelous. Uh -huh. She can't stand it when I tell my age. <laughs> it's the way it goes. I say every day you get up and nothing new hurts. It's a terrific day. The songs that, you know, you had a lot of people here tonight. She, she had some nerve to get up and sing in those songs. Fantastic. And she did. did. She did. She did. I want to tell change. you that I think this is the one of the biggest talents I've ever she witnessed is, is K.T. Sullivan. Yeah. She yeah. is superb. She should be starring yeah. on she, Broadway. Oh, yeah. yeah she will. This is an she unusual will. talent. You know, usually you see someone who's a great performer, and the singing is uh -huh. not quite up there, right, right. but she's a marvelous singer. I love the way she attacked at the beginning, so sweet and yes. soft. No, she's not so beautiful. Am I right? I love that. Gorgeous. Yes, isn't yes, she? She is so beautiful. She has, she has many levels. Well, listen to you three ladies. You yes. know the business. You know what right. we're talking about. Right. Thank you. I'd love to, to see you, see you. Bye -bye, You're guys. wonderful. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Beautiful. I'll come down to the Alex. Bye. The 20, September 27th. Okay, darling. Thank you. Have you got a card? Yes, I'm going to give it to you. Well, I'm with the Hollywood's newest singing sensation. Everyone's here at the Roosevelt at the Cinegrill. K. T. Sullivan. I Thank must you, say, Skip. this is the first time I have ever seen you. Isn't that amazing? I've heard your name for years. You, all the Skippy Low showcases. Right. When I was living in Los Angeles years ago. Right. But now I'm back again, and here you are. I'm, I'm, and you're interviewing me. But I didn't realize we'd never met until. Well, yeah. you know something? I have never heard of you, but you got a big fan in New York who writes, and uh, he is your fan. Now, you know is, who I'm talking now, is about. this Jim Gavin? Or no, is it? not Jim Gavin. You know the greatest uh, critic in the world. Well, and he loves you. And now, you let's were see. Absolutely. Stephen Holden, when I was at the Rainbow One Stars. No, someone else. Even uh, Roy Sander. No, no. Some, but it doesn't Rick matter. Reed. That's correct. Oh, God, I just talked to him tonight, and he <laughs> just oh, loves you. Isn't that sweet? I said I was coming to see you, and he oh. said, oh, give her my love. He's a good friend of Gloria DeHaven. Uh, yes, yes. And he, uh, Gloria was supposed to be here tonight. Right. I saw her in that film yesterday. She's fabulous. It's great, but, isn't it? But Rex and I were both at that MGM Big Grand uh -huh. concert at Carnegie, uh -huh. where Gloria was singing, right. and these, a lot of these great ladies. But so, it's so great to have them here. This is the place where they live. May I say something to you? Yeah. Casey, um, KT, by the I way. know, KT, yeah. tell yeah. me. Bringing this act together, this ladies of silver screen. Yeah. And you had the ladies in the audience tonight. It was great fun. You know, like Virginia O'Brien. You had yeah. Mitzi Gaynor. Mm -hmm. You had the ladies in the audience. It was great How fun. Did you feel on that stage singing? I felt, you know, it's interesting. I was nervous before, when I left my dressing room, I was nervous. When I walked down the stage, I relaxed because those ladies were beaming up at 
me. They loved you. And I knew it was okay. Yeah. K Star, Annette yeah. Warren. But you know, Brian. Annette were, Warren is the lady who did Showboat for the, Ava Gardner. The voice Gardner. of Ava Gardner. Oh, great. great. And she does some voices uh, in Arita Hayworth. She was the voice of Lucille Ball. That's also right. In a she was. Films. I just found out. She's yeah. done wonderful things. But those ladies were giving me back so much energy and so much love. Who put this act together tonight? Moi. You, moi. Yes, wonderful. I have about three hours worth of material, so I had to cut it down to right, this. Right. I've done other versions of this show, and someday I hope to get it into a theater. You know, I like to see something, a little background of, yeah. uh, of your silver screens there while you're doing something. I don't know why. I know the theater here. I mean, we don't have the theater, but, yeah, little, yeah. but this is going to be hit in New York. Have you played it? In I New have York? played the Rainbow and Stars with in New York. This? Yes. Um, and it's a different version. because I did, I did Betty Grable, okay. Doris Day. My favorite. It, oh, okay. Well, you got to come back and see. What I'm thinking about doing is like a two act version uh -huh. in a theater because there's so many more ladies. I think you're wonderful. Well, thank I, you. First Skip. time I've seen you, I think you're elegant. Oh. You come out that stage very quiet, which I loved. You oh. built it up beautifully. Yeah, yeah. And you're just, I didn't know what to expect from you. Yeah. And just the name KT Sullivan, I just know it's a lovely name, Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. But you got my, mm, Good, that I'm audience so loved you, darling. That, I, I felt the love, and that's why I relaxed. And you're here for one week? One week. Last week I was here, and on a clear day, you can see forever. Right. Uh, and so I this is my second great. week. It's a great, great experience. Uh -huh. Well, I, like I this just room. wish you luck. Where are you going from here? Well, I'll be going back to New York. I'm doing On a Clear Day at, uh -huh. at Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor. Right. And then I'll be doing lots of uh, lots of things in the island and um, in Where are you York. from? Uh, Oklahoma. I know you're from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. But it's called Casey. Boggy Depot. Oh, okay. That's a small little town. Right? Small town. That's great. My parents live in Norman now. It's from uh -huh. school at the University of Oklahoma. Kay Stars from Oklahoma. Uh, that's just right. I for, is she Star. still here? I forgot to tell. Oh my God! Kay Star. Is she still here? She has disappeared. She oh, is, where's Kay Star? She I forgot here. that she was from Oklahoma. Kay Star. Kay Star, where are you? She is there. Kay you know is from Oklahoma. I forgot that. Kay Star. That. You can hear. She. She. she oh, did she? Yeah, we did. Kay Star. All right. She just Kay. found out you I, were from Oklahoma, darling. You and Patty Page and, and Mickey Mantle. <laughs> And Will Rogers. And Will don't, Rogers. Forget, don't can't forget him. I can't. I forgot. What, what place are you from? Oklahoma? I'm from Doherty, Oklahoma. That's between Ardmore and Sulphur. Okay, not far. Not no, far. Not you not girls have the same I, kind of I flavor remember, yeah, of accents. I remember you know driving that? through Sulphur. You, you had to close your whole, hold your nose. It's, no, not anymore. No, they you know, capped they it. it. Oh, they good. capped they it. They capped that thing. Uh, yeah. It smells like like boiled eggs. Oh, it's rotten smells. eggs. Yeah. Rotten eggs. Rotten eggs. You can smell it from 50 Ardmore miles off. Okay, Star, look at this lovely little lady tonight. She was here at the Roosevelt. Wasn't she just wonderful? Did, wasn't she magic? Yes, she yes. was magic. Yes. She wasn't just good. She was magic. Yeah. She, <laughs> she was. was everybody. Well, and everybody was here right. to see it, what they, they certainly did. would look like if they looked like her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's very funny. When we were all standing up there for the picture, Mitzi and Annette Warren and Virginia, we were all standing up there, like seven of us at that, right. in that picture with Doing and, an MGM and, yeah, layout. And she said, well, what do you think our age is all together? <laughs> if we added it all up, do you talk about the zeros? <laughs> Thank you very much, Kay. I You're love you, darling. Well. Oh, it's great Good. to You're wonderful. You. I'm so glad I find you. Everybody gets a chance to see you. Well, I hear great things about you all the time from Margaret White. She's going to be here Margaret. coming. Uh, I'm going to see Margaret yeah. Slanley. Are you she's really? Oh, oh, she oh, always stays with me. Which, she you always live stays home. with me. Uh, no, no, I live in the low rent district of Bel Air. Bel Air, darling. Oh, okay, that's, that's why Margaret stays with me. Does Margaret stay with you up there? Oh, good girl. Yeah, she was my neighbor, only I didn't know it for the longest time. On 58th Street. I lived on 58 in New York. That's where Margaret lives, and I lived at, I lived at the Wilshire House on 58, right up the street. Oh, I see. And no, no. behind the Essex. But her address in L.A. is Kay's. That's right, my absolutely. <laughs> Ashdale Alley. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you, darling. Good luck to you. Thank you so, Good luck. Thank you so Thank you, very much. My fellow Oklahoman. Oh. Thank you, darling. I love it. You are going from here, you say, back to where? Back to New York. A cabaret convention is October. Right. Hopefully, um, uh, I'm going going to... We've had a lot of awards with the cabaret Yes, thing. the I cabaret, remember, the yeah. MAC Awards, right, right. the uh, Manhattan Association right, of right, Cabarets. Right. I received the award from Liza Minnelli. Yes, yes, yes. It's great fun. And in San Francisco, they hope to have a cabaret convention in February. And then... Uh, then eventually we'll be in London with the cabaret convention in London. So it's lots of lots of things. KT, it's wonderful meeting Skip. you. It's You're nice a you. wonderful performer. Thank, Thank you. you, Skip. Ladies of Finally, the Silver Finally, I've heard of you for so many years, and now I meet you. Lady of the Silver Screens, here she is. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Skip. Thank you. We have to have KT in the middle. Why am I? Well, guess what? Here I am at the Roosevelt, and guess what? KT Sullivan is not only KT Sullivan. She has sisters along with you. Sisters. It. 
sisters. There were never such devoted sisters. Ah, yes. I don't know the song. <laughs> your name is Heather. Heather. Yes. Why does nobody know who I am? <laughs> the youngest. The youngest. The youngest. Heather, who's, who's the I, other sister? I am the youngest. No, you're the, I'm the youngest. People always say she's the youngest. I hate you, that. You're, you're, your name is? Stacy. Stacy. K-T. And Heather. Heather. The youngest. I love <laughs> You all sing. You all sing. You all do different things. Heather, Heather sings, uh, composes, plays the piano, uh -huh. and uh, your material is more folk pop. Folk. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's good. There you go. She's finally getting it. So it's a different kind of thing. And Heather. And Heather is also a, a, a Heather's also a photographer. Ah, oh, she, she took, took some pictures. great shots. Yeah, I've seen her around tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. She did you three three it. shoots. No, not at all. You didn't hear it. No. She did three shoots today. Ah, She's okay. a big big star in LA. Yeah. She's yeah. wonderful. I, I'm. So tell yeah. me Stacy. What's Stacey happening with Stacy has you? the children. Ah, oh, she does. The beautiful she did that for children. Us. Uh -huh. the, the, the designated she did uh, that child for us. <laughs> we have two, now. We don't have to have children. We have two beautiful nieces and nephews. So growing uh, up in Okino Oklahoma, Okinawa, Okinawa. I did Okinawa. You three girls. Tell me, what's possible? Our, uh, she, our mother, our mother had eight children. Eight. Any other hobbies? Between the three of us. <laughs> actually, she's a wonderful between singer. Between the three of us, and composer. Was a she was a singer. Now she's composing and writing poetry. Uh huh. She went to college at the age of fifty. And why don't you do a, a, an evening? People oh, ask always ask. That. Oh, We're so different. We're so different. Who's the playwright that wants us to do a play? Who well, is it? It's just all Who over the place. It would be wonderful to see three of you, Sullivan, well, just the Sullivan different. sisters. It used to be the Sullivan brothers in a movie. Now it's There's the Sullivan fighting sister. Sullivan. Right. Right. We'll be the sisters. Irish sisters. Irish Irish is ever. Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 Top of the morning. It's a great well, story because I don't know if you guys know, but you know. We're Southern Baptist now, right. but recently my great grandmother died, and they found the um, the Catholic. Uh -huh. Sure, and because uh, because there were no priests in Oklahoma, right. and a little preacher we all became Baptist. Yeah. Well, preacher, kind of priest in Oklahoma? No, 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 no. Really? Not in the go, not during the land rush. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That early. Yeah. I haven't heard that. Very, story. very persecuted. Yeah. 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 So we became well, Southern yeah. Baptist. Well, we're not now. Oh, Believe no, me, we're not. We're not now. Okay. Okay. No, okay. we're not Southern Baptist. <laughs> No, Jerry Falwell here. No, 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 no. That's the Sullivan sisters. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So nice to meet you. Is Mark Nadler? Okay. Here we go. Okay, we'll do it again. Hello. Hello. Who is this man here? This is Mark Nadler. As Julie Wilson says, my partner in crime. I need this man a lot. He's wonderful. As you can tell. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's brilliant. And you, conductor, how long? I uh, have been playing for KT since 1991. Is that right? Since 91. We met yeah. in New York. We've played everywhere. We've played in Nebraska. We've played in New York a lot. We've played here. We've played um, all over the Long Island. Country. The West Hamptons, the East Hamptons, Boston. We've had a great time Sam, together. Sam, you work together, common, uh, combinations together with your act, I mean, giving ideas. In this show, yes, actually, I, I had a... I felt there was yeah. more ideas. Well, Katie's very, very generous. Right. She allows whoever she's playing for her, right. she allows the time. She's also very chameleonic. Is that yes, a word? Yes, yes, yes. Whoever is playing for her, she takes what's best about them and puts it into what she does. Mm -hmm. So it's always, whenever you see her, you see, you, you with somebody else, you see a different act. Yeah. Tell me, how did she discover you? How did she find you? Well, you, actually, you're wonderful. You're I, was, I was doing my own act uh -huh. at a place called Adam's Rib in New York, and KT and... Um, see, Skip knows these places, yeah. yeah. KT and, and, and her friend Tom came and heard me, and afterwards she comes up to me and she says, I felt like I've been hit by a train. <laughs> You that. said that. And I it's said, true, that's the way he is. And I thought, well, that's sort of flattering in a funny, <laughs> odd sort of way. So I went to see her. I had to go see KT because she right. came to see me. That's what you do. Right. And then I felt like I had been hit by a dove. Oh. She, 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 yeah. She hit me but tonight it's a nice, like a dove. Very oh, sweet. You're very you. sweet. So it's nice when the two of us together, nice you get to see a train get hit by a dove, which usually <laughs> is probably not. She didn't attack the audience. That's what's so great She doesn't her. attack the yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. She comes on that stage, just walks on, very simple, and just goes right. And you know, I don't know what. I love it. I love you it. don't save know it, what he it. says with his martini in hand. You, <laughs> you want to know what? The thing about KT is when you have the chops, right. when you have the voice, yeah, and when you have the body and the face, yeah. you don't need to really. Yes. Push a lot. You know, See, I push nice. a lot because I don't have the voice, the body, or well, the face. She, it was uh, very nice. Beautifully. You know what Mitzi Gaynor told me tonight was very sweet. She said, first of all, when you walked out, right. 
is 90% was there. Yeah. For me, too. Isn't that nice? That's so nice to hear, especially from someone like Mitzi Guinness, who has the look. Yes. She's yes. got She's a lot of look. She's always had the look. You had the immediately. Mm. Tell me, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Waterloo, Iowa. Oh, Iowa is Midwest the pork Midwest. state. Yeah. Iowa's the yeah. pork state, and I'm Jewish. Oh, I'm Jewish, too. Oh, really? <laughs> well, where did you come from? Italian Jew. Oh, Italian! Oh, yeah. An Italian Jew. There's no well, difference like between Italian. Rock, Rockford, Illinois. Oh, Illinois. Thank See, you. they hate Jews, too. But, no, but no? I moved to here, and then I went to New York as a kid. Oh, good for you. See, I was in Iowa a long time in the pork state, and it was pretty awful. You always wanted to be a pianist? I always wanted to be an alcoholic, and then <laughs> oh, because... You're doing a well job. That I do what I can. <laughs> uh, because he, I... His first job was in a saloon. My first job was in a saloon at the age of 10, <laughs> because that was the only way I could get in there. <laughs> And so I learned how to the play piano. the piano. I love it. Yeah. Stride. I yeah. love it. He would hit the uh, player piano. You would yeah, hit... they gave me a player piano, and if I didn't know a song, I would try to get my fingers in the keys. You so know? Learned... where would you like to see the act, this act going to? Uh, back I'd to like Manhattan? To, I'd like it to be a theater piece with an intermission, because we have about three hours worth of material, yeah. which we can cut down to, a, yes. to two hours ten. And I think yeah. it's wonderful, and I Thank think you, you guys are great. So Thank like you. your favorite, uh, you mentioned Betty Grable. Yes. She's in here, too, uh, Doris Day. Uh -huh. We have lots of other ladies. Carmen it's, Miranda. It's wonderful. When I was a little boy, that's who I used to personate. Oh. Carmen Miranda? Oh. I took my mother's turban. Oh, no skip. banana oh, was safe in Illinois. I did all that. You, that's how oh. I got into show business. Oh, with, honey. With Carmen Miranda. You've got to see the whole show. Oh, yes. I love it. You're Thank wonderful, Katie. Thank you, Skip. And you can call me Mark. Mark. <laughs> I don't want to say sister. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Skip. Thank you.